Hello, I'm going to show you how I made a PBR texture setup for the new unofficial build of Blender. Uh, this will be using the EV render engine and uh, this is uh, what it'll look like. Uh, well, an idea of what it'll look like. We will have a diffuse texture. This is just the base color and uh, stuff like that. And then uh, we'll have the metalness which gives it a reflective surface or a flat surface. Um, then we'll be going through the creation of a roughness map, which helps to refine the metalness map by uh, making it more well, flat and kind of misty looking. Um, at least in my mind, that's what it looks like. I will also be going through the creation of a normal map. We'll be taking the diffuse texture and then we're going to change it into the normal map. Um, also ambient occlusion, it gives dark spots around the edges which gives it a nice depth feel. And then we might be going through the creation of a specular map. Um, uh, yeah, which will hopefully give us some good results. Okay, so uh, by default the EV build of Blender doesn't have all the major features that a stable version of Blender has. So we're not going to be able to use that for texture painting, but we can use it to view our textures later. So let's just minimize that. And here's my basic Blender setup. It's pretty close, but not, uh, not all the cool fancy stuff yet. So let's see here. Um, I'm just going to create a new material, start from scratch. So, new material, uh, let's see here, Revolver Tutorial, Tutorial, Revolver Tutorial, <laughs> okay, and so let's see here, um, I can do this one of two ways, I can, I can use Zero Brush, which has a very nice Texture layer uh, manager, which allows you to basically draw right off the bat. Um, but for the sake of the this tutorial, I don't technically need it. So let's go over to our texture panel here. We'll add a new texture. Call this diffuse. Create a new texture. Revolver and Diffuse. I'm going to use 2048 by 2048. And uh, I'm going to click 32 bit float. Blank, alpha. Technically, I don't think we need alpha for the basic diffuse, but eh, we'll leave it. Okay, now we'll just open up the UV texture editor our image editor and uh, as you can see all the, uh, the UV maps do not uh, intersect they don't overlap they have uh, around an 8 I think it's 8 pixel uh, spacing between each object and uh, from here uh, as you can see I made sure that the wooden handle is almost to where you could mirror it. That's going to help out a lot in Krita later. Uh, this is also the other part of the wooden handle. Um, and from here, we are going to select what we want to paint. Um, for me, I want the wood, and then later on I'll just control I and select the metal. And so that'll make things easy for this model. So let's do that now. Here, sorry about all the button pressing. Texture paint mode. And now, if I paint, uh, nothing's happening yet because I, I do not have it set to texture mode. Okay, texture draw. Yeah, now I can paint on that, and you can see there's red there, and there's red up there. Uh, that's not the color we're going to be using. We're going to switch over to fill mode. 
and then we're going to reset the texture to uh, let's see here. Let's give it a basic wood wood texture. Something like that. Okay, uh, I'm going to select this box down here, face selection masking. Which basically, if you hit tab to go in the edit mode, you can select what parts you want. Well, it'll select those and not the others. So let's select that again. Paint that in. Okay, uh, set our strength. Okay. Threshold, hardness. Uh, so, oh, 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 okay. Multiply. <laughs> Mix. Okay. Uh, yeah. There we go. It's a basic color. Tab, edit mode, control I, select inverse, and then give it a good. Yeah. Now we can see everything on the map that we want to paint on later. For some reason I have some artifacts. Let's see if I can't clear that up. Maybe the hardness settings messing with me. Yeah. Okay, whenever you use the fill mode, don't use the hardness that uh, zero brush adds to it. Okay. Control I. Let's see here. There we go. Select our wood texture and boom. Yeah. Okay, now we are ready to load this into Krita. Save the image. Uh, Revolver diffuse.png 16 bit. Seems good to me. Now I'll open up Krita. Okay. And I'll find my texture that we just saved. Yeah. There you go. And then I'll just drag and drop that in. Insert as new layer. Ah, default is probably fine. There we go. So, now we have our texture map. I'm going to create a new layer above this. And this is going to be texture. Okay, because this is what we're going to paint on top of. Now, um, I'm going to see if I don't have a wood texture that you should be able to get for free. Let's see here. See, Zero Brush has a free texture pack, which. Yeah. They have a free free texture pack that has some pretty good stuff. <laughs> I modified that. Let's see here. Well free ones here aren't aren't quite what we need, but we'll see if we can't make it work. Eh, it'll be fine. Here, select my zoom in tool here. I'm going to hide that layer for now. And I select my revolver diffuse layer. I want to color select. And hold shift and select that one too. 
Okay. Go back into my paintbrush. Show that layer, and this time I'm going to lower the opa the opacity. And I'm going to click up here where there's two kind of vertical looking triangles. And I can move this around to where I want to mirror it. Now, uh, up here, there's a, a four box right next to normal. We want to select the left one. This will give us our brush preset. And I want to look for a clone. And then now, let's see here, if I increase my brush size. And if you hold control and left click, it sets a spot to, uh, to paint on. I'm just giving it a good mirror, hopefully. Yeah. Okay. And let's see here. And press Control I. Oh. Uh, what's here? Go up here to select and invert selection. And I'm going to press delete. Select, deselect. Bring our mirroring tool over there. Oh, come on. Okay, going to select that one again. Go over to my brush, but I need that. Need my texture again. Okay, move that over. Come on. There we go. Didn't want to move there for a moment. Select the proper layer, bring it back. There we go. Paintbrush, then let's just clone that in. That pretty much fills that up. Okay. Do the same thing. Select, invert selection, delete. Select, deselect. Okay, let's turn off that. Go back to our hourglass, control, left click. Alright, we've got our, our basic wood set up. Then press uh, right click on that. And let's see here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Merge with layer below. There we go. And let's mess around with this thing. The filters. See if we can't end up with a better looking color. I'm just using my right arrow keys. Well, it's not pretty. Um, so, See if I can't select those spots again and see if I can't increase the human saturation. I'm going to duplicate that layer first. Ah, let's see here. Filters, colors. Or maybe not adjust. Bring this contrast. Yeah. Let's increase the contrast a little. <laughs> no, not that much. Okay. 
about that. That's interesting. Well, we're getting some unique stuff here. Looks like we, we missed a spot. <laughs> okay. Okay, so far so good. Yeah, it's doing good. Okay, and I'm gonna duplicate that again. Maybe human saturation color filter adjust human saturation. Something like that gives it a little color. Okay, um, from here, I'll press Control E to merge down. Well, actually, no. I'm gonna select all these and then merge. Ugh, okay. Select the top two, merge down, and then it will merge into the layer below that. Never mind. Hmm. Okay. Okay, painting on top. Um, I actually created a custom brush preset for this. Uh, but let's see if I can't can't duplicate it for you. Let's see here, where was it? Yeah, there it is. Okay, so our brush preset is over in the pixel tab. And yeah, Let's see here if I can't find what I based it off of. I believe it was the block fuzzy. Yep. Then what I did was I set, I think I left the diameter, no, I increased the diameter, decreased the ratio, and then I increased the randomness, the density, Brought that down. The spacing uh, increase. Not that much. Increase it to something like that. Go down here to pattern. Hit the checkbox. And you'll actually want to scroll down until you see this one. Yeah, this one. One, two, three, and four. And then it'll be the second one on your left. Basically what it's doing is it's giving us a good grunge texture to paint on the gun barrel. And change it until you're happy with the effect.
something like that. Maybe a little more density because we want to paint a little quicker. Okay. So I'm going to stick with that. And then you just paint it on. <laughs> I'm painting this on my second layer. Basically, whenever you're through with that, we'll throw this on the gun and see if it's what we want. And you know what I could do? I could go over to my handy selection tool, go down to the revolver diffuse, um, tool options, and then let's see your limit to current selection. Let's see here. Usually there is a selection to uh, select everything I'm not seeing it currently ah, but I'm going to select the wood the blackness and then I'm going to select Invert selection. And now we should only be able to paint on the metal. Go back to our paintbrush, and you see I can't paint on the wood, but I can paint over here. That makes things faster, easier, and it's much nicer. Okay. Probably not too good to paint uh, darker colors around the outside edges because you never know whenever you're going to run into like a repeating issue or like cut off textures. Uh, from here, I think it seems to be pretty good. And we're going to leave this open, but we're going to go down to File, Save As, and we've got to navigate to wherever we saved our texture. There we go. PNG image. <clears throat> I'm just going to say Revolver Color, just so we don't get confused. Or a diffuse map. Finished. Diffuse. That PNG, just in case. Okay, just keep everything the same. Let it go through its saving process. Let's see here, we will open up Blender. What we're going to do is we're going to replace image, switch it over to the finished diffuse. Okay. And as you can see, it's not too bad. Sorry if I'm rotating this around too quick. <laughs> yeah, that's not too bad. Of course, if we took more time, we could actually get much better textures on it. That's basic. And from here, if you want, you can create a stencil real quick. Is I like to have just something weird and unique. Let's see here. Da -da -da -da. Over to my downloads. All right, come on. Downloads, Blender add-on, Zero Brush, Textures, Stencils. And I like to have a Jelly Roger. And basically at this point you just 
you remove it. Go over to texture, and let's see here. Yeah, texture. And we'll select our Jelly Roger. I'm going to use it as a stencil. You can hold right click or hold the right mouse button to move it around the screen. Hold shift and right mouse button. You can scale it. Control and right mouse button will rotate it. And so let's just zoom in, get it in the spot that I want it. Don't want it too small because the texture is going to be a little pixelated. I select the color you want it. I don't want red. And you might want to put it on multiply so you can get the, uh, your texture sticking through it. Kind of a burned in look. Yeah, it's good enough for me. So, uh, past this point, um, probably want to save it out again. Save as image. Just going to override it. Go back over to Krita. Open image. And it's going to be a pain in it. Okay, whenever it loads in, that's what it's going to look like. So Let's see here. It looks a little, a little light, doesn't it? Go back in object mode. Back over here and shadeless. Well. Yeah, like what I was saying, you probably don't want to color in too dark around the edges because you might end up with cut off, cut off stuffs. Anyway, um, let's see here. technically I probably should have painted the Jolly Roger onto a different layer, but yeah, this was quick and easy to do. Now, um, since we have our basic texture set up, I'm going to open it in GIMP do some other fun stuff with it. Create our normal map and metalness and roughness. Okay. I'm going to duplicate that layer. Let's see here. Normal map. Duplicate again. Roughness. Duplicate again. Um, I'm going to skip specularity for now and just go on to metalness. And yeah, I'll do the normal map because that's quick and easy. I think the normal maps turn out better if you desaturate them, but I could be wrong. Average seems to look good for me. Over to filters, map. Use our normal map plugin. And do a 3D preview. Uh, hold right mouse button to zoom in. Hold left mouse button to look around. Gives a little bit of detail. I think I'm going to increase the scale by two. 
give it a real pity look. And looks good to me. Okay. Now we'll export that as normal map. Or normal. Load that in the blender once that's through. Okay. Uh, I do have uh, one sun lamp and one hemi as the, the light source. New, normal, open, select the normal map. Cool, the school turned up. Okay. Go down here, we're going to uncheck color, check normal, then we're going to go up here to image sampling, hit normal map, and immediately get some, some shiny stuff. Yeah, cool. Okay. Now we'll go on to the other stuff. I do know I'm using uh, just Blender default, so anyone can follow along with this, but later on we're going to move it over here, which I should probably start doing. <laughs> so, this is the 2.8.01 build. I'm going to hold control and I'm going to cut all that off. This is what it'll look like whenever it first loads in. Then, I'm going to load in my diffuse. Yeah, there we go. Then, so finish diffuse. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm scrapping the gun. I'm going to copy this, control C. Bring it over here, control V to paste it. And there's what the gun will look like by default. Okay. Over to revolver and there. That is just the texture. And also a very low poly looking gun. So I'm going to delete that again. I'm going to apply modifiers because the new EV build does not have proper control of their modifiers yet. There we go. Much smoother, much nicer to look at. Come on, there we go. There we go. That's what that'll look like. Now see here, we will work, uh, oh, that's here. We'll add in our normal map, too. So, basically, whenever you're first starting out, press Shift and then A. It'll come up with the menu to add in a node. Uh, you want to go with image texture for all of the normal map roughness and all that stuff. And then, whenever you want to add in a normal map, you go down here to vector, and then normal map. I'll add in your color, then your UV map, and add it into normal. And you can click the little arrow to minimize. And let's see here. Over there. And now, I also like to do non color data. Yeah. 
think non-color data gives a better result. Now, let's work on our metalness. Um, so, metalness. Um, basically, what we have is we have areas that will be reflective and areas that won't be reflective. I like to give a little a little metalness to the wood just to make it look like it's been uh, stained. Um, so that'll give it a nice look. Let's see here. And I might want to load in the basic, yeah. I'm gonna load that in so I can select things better. There. See, GIMP has the ability to select similar colors. So, I can select all my metal, or all my wood. And here... Uh, well, first things first, I'm going to select None, I'm going to do Colors, and Desaturate. I'm going to go with Lightness this time, because it seems to be a little darker. Go back over to over to my wood layer there. And go over to my metalness, and then I want to brightness and contrast. Bring down my brightness quite a bit. I believe if the object is white, it's reflective, and if it's black, it's not reflective. If I remember correctly. So, let's see if I'm right. I'm going to actually invert that. <laughs> ah. Forget that. Okay, and then Control I. I don't want it so bright because that's just too much, too much reflection for an older gun. Back to actually give it kind of a look like that, and I think. This is done. So file export as, and we shall call it metalness. Let that finish. Good, good. Okay, wrong one. There we go. And we'll plug in our metalness. Okay, tutorial, metalness, here we go. Yeah, hey, let's see if I did it right. Yep. You'll see the handle is slightly slightly glossy, but not overly glossy, and the gun has more uh, metalness, but it's not insane. So Too bad, not too bad so far. Now let's go back over and create our roughness. Roughness, it almost, I mean, it controls how how see-through the metalness is. Like, uh, if you have more roughness, then the metal is almost you can't can't see reflection in it. But if the roughness is all the way down, you can see a perfect reflection, and it's like a mirror. So it drives the metalness. Um, it actually works opposite of metalness. The wider it is, the yeah, the more roughness you have, the darker it is, the less roughness. So technically, it's not opposite, but it is because you have to invert it. So.
go with something like that, but I think I want the colors to not be so bright. We'll go with something like that at first, and we'll see if that's good. Basically, experimentation and see what suits your needs at the time. Because it will always be different. Okay. The roughness. I packed my textures, which is why I have to do that thing every time. Sorry about that. Okay. And as you can see, the handle isn't as glossy as it was before. And the metal is just barely reflective. Oh, we have a little seam there. Okay, well that's just the normal map. Uh, I'll need to smooth that down. And then... This, yeah, the, the gun looks alright. But it'll look much better if we have ambient occlusion. Let's see, here. Let's see if I can't simulate that. Oh. Yeah, okay. It has no clue what to do with ambient occlusion right now, so let's bake that in. Go back over to Blender. Let's, uh, let's select everything. Open up our texture UV editor. And let's uh, create a new texture, new image, call it Bake, 2048 by 2048, Alpha, 32-bit, good. Then scroll all the way down here to the bottom to Bake, Ambient Occlusion, Normalized, and we'll click that button. We'll wait for that to finish. And there we go. That's what a an ambient occlusion map looks like. And it even caught some of the detail from the, from the normal map it kind of looks like. Cool. So we will save as... And we will save it as ambient occlusion, or AO. Go AO, because that's fast. Okay, and now that that's done, we'll load it on the model, and if I did everything correctly, it will look pretty good. There we go. Let's see, the ambient occlusion is casting a shadow around there. It's also casting a shadow down there as well. Not too bad. Um, now, one other thing that we can do is I'm going to load up my other blender and I'm going to paint on some other parts. Well, I'd like to make that darker. So that's kind of the style that goes around. Object, texture paint. You can either, well, I don't know. Filling in, we could try that. Dark, strength isn't going to be maybe point. Point three. See, something like that just doesn't look right. <laughs> That's here to do. And yeah, it's, it's probably about as good as we can go with that. 
That's I could just do the line thing and kind of paint that in. But I could also do that over in GIMP if I wanted to. So I'm going to load in the UV map over here in the UV image editor. Go over to UVs, and then you can export UV layout all UVs and we'll just save that as revolver UV map and once that's through we can just import it over into GIMP and we'll be able to see it and then uh, UV map And there we go. Now, from experience, I know that this is that's the chamber or magazine. Gun. Do that. Increase the radius to where it's where I want it. Okay, and if I if I did that correctly, yeah. Okay, let's try that out. Export. Da, 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 da. All right, finish the fuse. Okay. So, sorry if this is getting a little boring for you. But, uh, well, hopefully, you can learn something from it. Have to reload to finish the fuse, and there we go. Perhaps I went a little dark on that. Okay. And what I could have done was add that over to the ambient occlusion, which would have made it a lot better. Which actually I can do that. Where's my ambient? Okay, I'm gonna load in my ambient occlusion map. There we go. Then I'll just load in that. And And there we go. I'll just export that again and well, we'll see if that changes anything. Uh, of course I can also put it here too. Uh, multiply. I might be cheating somewhat, but all right. Well, we'll do it with and without, so you have a basic idea of what that'll look like. Uh, 
have you finished the fuse? Okay. There we go. So let's open up the finish the fuse again. Okay. Then we'll also open up the finished AO. As you can see, the ambient occlusion actually gave it somewhat of what I was looking for. Now if I want to... Something weird happened there. Okay. So what happened to my ambient occlusion? Okay. I should have expected that. The ambient occlusion is off the map. Whoops. Sorry about that. That means... Actually... No, they're fine. No, UV map. My UV map is fine. Okay, cool. So, ambient occlusion, export, da -da -da -da. Sorry for all the jumping back and forth. Alright, now we got, we have the ambient occlusion, as well as the revolver texture. Because I think it does a nice job with it. Let's see here. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. The ambient occlusion is wonderfully, wonderfully mapped. Okay. And we'll go over to diffuse. Out of that. And there you have it. That's the finished revolver. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned how metalness, ambient occlusion, diffuse, texture painting, and blender. I've tried to keep it as free as possible. We use textures that we created using Krita, as well as the wood handle, which is a free texture pack from Sensei Format's Zero Brush. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as you saw at the beginning of the video, it, we had a much better handle, but that was a premium texture bought in another add-on. Uh, I can't remember the name of it currently, but uh, it's around the $15 range. Uh, so, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned how to make PBR textures, as well as a basic texture to work in Blender. Um, yeah, let's, let's reopen that one. Fuse. And ambient occlusion. So as you can see, it works in both Blender and Eevee. And I'll, I'll let you decide which one's better, or if they're both the same, or if each one has a, a better look to it. Uh, of course, if I had a better sky map, I could be showing you what it looks like with the bloom, which basically means that metal will actually uh, give off a light flare, as well as if you have like a glowing technological texture uh, using emission, which, I mean, if you want, I could do a spaceship texture tutorial, and... 
then we could get some really cool space background with stars and stuff and then uh, we'll actually have the ship to where each light gives off this radiant glow um, so thank you and uh, have a good day